You know what the worst age is? Being a tween. That's horrible. I saw this 12-year-old on the subway the other day freaking out over nothing. He's like, I am in love with Vanessa. And she won't even like sit beside me at lunch. I want to walk up to this poor like little boy and be like, honey, relax, you have nothing to worry about. You're a hundred percent gay. <laughs> Being gay is expensive, and they don't talk about that. It's expensive. And like, I'm picky with my gay. That's the thing, I'm not gay for everybody. Very picky. Like when ugly girls find out I'm gay, they be like, you gay? I'll be like, nah. This has absolutely nothing to do with you, no. I'm not dating an ugly guy. I'm not gonna date an ugly girl, that's a waste. If I'm gonna be gay, I need to be top-notch gay. So I went and found me a girlfriend and she's beautiful. And it's crazy because I picked the restaurant for the first date we met at the restaurant. She was dressed up, I was dressed up, it was cute. We ordered food, she got food, I got food. She got drinks, I got drinks. She was like, let's take shots. I was like, let's take shots. <laughs> Took shots, she was like, let's get dessert. I was like, baby, let's do it. <laughs> and then the bill came out, right? And it got quiet like this. Cause at that point, we was just two beautiful women sitting across from each other. And I was confused cause I was trying to figure out who was paying for it cause I knew I wasn't. <laughs> I was like, I'm not paying for this. I don't know what she thinking, but I know I'm not. So the waiter came back out to the table. He was like, are you ladies ready yet? I was like, we are not, we have a problem. Give us a second. Let's, let's figure this out. So I looked at her across the table and I was like, well, since I picked the restaurant, I think I should be the judge of this. So I looked at her, and then I looked back at myself, and I was like, well, my titties are bigger than yours. So you the man by default. <laughs> Pay this bill and make sure you tip, sir. <laughs> and she did, she paid it. She's a great guy, she's a good one. Um, oh God, I'll give you guys a little bit of a a little bit of a family history, I am gay. And to add on to that, my older brother is also gay. So my dad is real proud. <laughs> yes. The thing is like, I was a very flamboyant kid. You know what I mean? Like there was no question. And it didn't occur to me that my older brother might have also been a flamboyant kid until my mom sent me some family videos recently of when we were younger. <laughs> it's when the Chicago Bulls won a championship and they're going around the entire house and my whole family's screaming. They're like, Michael Jordan rules! Michael Jordan rules! Then they get to my nine-year-old brother and he's like, well, if anyone rules, it's Janet Jackson. <laughs> And I can just imagine like my mom trying to have a conversation with my dad being like, Steve, I think this one's gayer than the other one. This is my coming out story. It's very personal. So I really, basically you're welcome. Um, so I grew up on the South side of Chicago and I came out when I was 17, but I knew that coming out risked losing people that were close to me. But, that, but at that time in my life, I was like, you know what? So be it. I uh, have four sisters and my parents. That's who I wanted to come out to. I was too afraid to tell my sisters in person, so I just sent them a group text. And all it said was, hey guys, I'm gay. Then one of them wrote back, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> then I wrote back, what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> then she wrote, you wear a lot of cowboy boots in the summer. And I replied, I just like the sound of clacking. <laughs> then I wrote, oh, there it is. I see what you mean. Okay. <laughs> but I was so mad because I was expecting them to abandon me. I was going to use that trauma to create art in the future. <laughs> they deprived me of that. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to come out to my mother because she's crazy Christian. I was, again, too afraid to tell her in person. I wrote her a letter and I went to school. I'm sitting in class and I get a text message from her. And all this says is, I wouldn't care if you were a green alien, I will love you no matter what. And I was like, what the f does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna use whatever f up thing she said as the prologue to my memoir. Um, so I go home, cause I know she has something else to say, she's a sneaky bitch. Uh, 
She calls me into the bathroom. Uh, she's sitting on the toilet. We have a close relationship. I sit on the edge of the tub. She looks me in the eyes and she says, I love you, but you know you're going to hell, right? And I replied, you're divorced, so are you? <laughs> and we looked at each other for a very long time. And she took a deep breath and she said, you got me there. And I was like, yes, I did. <laughs> the gay comes quick. <laughs> I'm sassy. Um, and then I was like, dope, I'm an out homosexual man. Got my first boyfriend that summer. My nephew had a birthday party, brought him to the party, normalized it all. It was great. Then on my way home, I got a text message from my father, and he was like, who was that guy? And I wrote back, that was my boyfriend. And he wrote, you're gay, question mark. And I wrote, oh my God, I forgot to tell you. <laughs> And then he wrote, no joke, this is exactly what he wrote. It's okay, just don't get AIDS. <laughs> and I replied, yeah, you neither. <laughs> <laughs> and then he wrote, you got me there. And I was like, yes, I did. I like being gay. My favorite part is uh, the homophobia has gotten pretty good. <laughs> It's gotten pretty good. You guys hear about this pastor in the South who said he'd unlock the problem to getting rid of all the gays? Yeah, it's on YouTube. Fantastic. You have to watch it. He's like, well, the first thing we got to do, we got to take all the lesbians, put them in a big electrified fence, cage them in. Stop right there. I'm in. <laughs> with the other lesbians. I don't need to know the rest. Let's just fucking do it. Sometimes I feel a little bit more like a guy socially than a... Because I'm not like a regular woman. You guys picked up on that, right? <laughs> I see some regular women. You guys have complex social rules that I don't fully understand. Uh, maybe the men know it better than the women because it's so bizarre. Women will break up with their friends. You, you've heard this, right? Like, Heather, are too toxic. I had to end that. And I'm like, end what? Brunch? What are you talking about? You've never heard a man be like, with Dave, I just give and I give and I give and I give. So much advice about crypto and he never reciprocates, right? Ask a man about his best friend. He is loyal. He's like, Dan, I thought beside that man, I would die for him. You're like, you guys meet in the service? Nah, Nick's game, three weeks ago. <laughs> I have a couple lesbian surprises. I'm uh, sporting a Brazilian right now. This guy lost his shit over that. I know, and then I got a couple woos from some creeps. I like that, that's good. I know, right? It is surprising, a lesbian with a Brazilian. Kelly, can you be a lesbian with a Brazilian? Like, I was scared to get my wax, not because of the pain, but I was like, is this gonna fundamentally change who I am? Like, they'll rip out that last strip and I'll wake up with a dick in my mouth and my nail's done. Like, what is gonna happen? Are we pulling back on dick in my mouth? If you're gonna pull back on dick in my mouth and my nail's done, you're gonna hate the rest of my fucking set, okay, you pieces of shit? I woke up this morning, I said, don't do crowd work, Ashley, and... <laughs> I can't help it, I'm sort of a genius at it. All right. <laughs> I love my Brazilian, though, I love it. I think it looks better, it feels better. I got cat called leaving the salon. <laughs> I walked out of the wax center and this dude was like, damn girl, you got that fresh wax pussy glow. <laughs> and I look like this all the time. I'm a lesbian, I'm a feminist. I never get catcalled, but I've been training for this moment my entire fucking life. <laughs> One goddamn wax. I'm like, oh my God, thank you. <laughs> This is the best time in the world to be queer. I'm so excited. Being queer is the best fucking thing that ever happened to me. And I walk around with like power. I'm walking around like, yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> That's right, motherfucker. Because everyone knows nowadays you can't say anything remotely sideways about queers. If you, if you even slightly inconvenience a queer person on TV, 100 male ballet dancers will show up outside your fucking job and pot of bourree until you come downstairs and apologize.
I'm like, did you make fun of my dog's wedding? Pada boo-ray, pada boo-ray. <laughs> Han Tien in Vietnamese actually means happy fairy. And that's why I'm gay, yes! Yes! Oh, I made eye contact with him, but yeah, you can have one too. Oh. My parents did this to me. Like a Vietnamese blessing. And you know, as a professional homosexual who's trying to make it in this industry, it's so exciting that there's like a big gay movie that comes out every year. <laughs> like a few years ago, it was Carol, uh, Call Me By Your Name. This year it was Joker. <laughs> uh, and it's so, so exciting, but I also find that it's so frustrating that straight actors keep winning awards for playing gay characters when I have yet to win any awards for my convincing portrayal of straight girl who gives hand jobs all throughout high school and college. Okay? I was method. I did not break character once. Some people said it was brave. <laughs> Others said, ow, too dry, so. Being gay is over, dog. <laughs> it's over, it's over, it's been over since Glee. The television program Glee ruined it, it's over. It's not cool anymore. Being non-binary is cool. <laughs> what are they? You can't pin them down, that's cool. Being non-binary is the new being gay. Being gay is the new being straight. Being straight, we haven't seen it since about 2015, have we? <laughs> Not a confirmed case. We've heard rumors. There's been underground whisperings, but we haven't seen it. And of course, being bisexual is the new being Italian. A lot, of, a lot of wearing leather jackets and pretending to be discriminated against, right? It's like... <laughs> Everybody hates me. Nobody thinks of you. <laughs> I want to start off uh, by letting you know that I am gay as hell. Uh, I'm great at it. I do a great job. I was sitting there being black. I was like, you know what? Give me another thing. <laughs> I got it. Come on over. <laughs> I'm also African, thoroughbred from the source. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I came to America when I was a little diva. <laughs> it's also the first time I ever saw a white person. And my immediate thought was, it's a black ghost. <laughs> this country's filled with apparitions. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I have been gay for quite some time. Uh, I came out when I was 18, back in the year 2000, you know, before it was cool. I told my parents I was gay. Uh, they're both uh, very traditional African immigrants so I don't recommend doing that. <laughs> Write them a letter. They can't read. That's... <laughs> but I told them I was gay, and my dad got very upset. I don't know if it was because I said I was gay, or that I sang the entirety of Papa Don't Preach immediately afterwards. <laughs> it's a much longer song than you think it is. <laughs> but he got very mad, and he said the most cliche thing you can say in that situation. He said, God hates gay people. I was like, tight. <laughs> I'm an atheist. <laughs> telling me God hates gay people is like telling me a leprechaun hates my suit. <laughs> I don't believe in leprechauns. Also, this is a shitty leprechaun because this is a dope ass suit. You need to hang out with better leprechauns. My phone, uh, speaking of, actually thinks I'm straight. I'm gay. 
but my phone thinks I'm straight. And I know that to be true because it recently auto-corrected high bitch to hobbit. I was like, okay, I can pass. Um, actually very much can't pass. I was recently, I was, I've already once been featured on Comedy Central's Instagram account. And that's why, this is a huge honor. Um, thank you, thank you so much. Okay, calm down or I'm gonna call the police and report you for obsession with me. Um, <laughs> And um, truly the last time I was on Comedy Central's Instagram, I did no gay material, uh, just like family values shit. Uh, but I did speak in this voice and it upset straight people across the nation. <laughs> um, I think they thought I was doing it on purpose, which I agree would be socio. <laughs> but I did read every single comment because I am absolutely obsessed with myself and it was just gay people aren't funny I hate gay people I hate the white girl wine we get it you like dick don't get to sound like one's in you right now gay people aren't funny but then thank god finally people did come on and say actually shut up because gay people are funny and just because this person isn't funny <laughs> doesn't mean no gay people are funny and I was like, oh my God, even the allies are absolutely dragging me. <laughs> Put it on my tombstone. Here lies Pat Regan. The allies hated him even. <laughs> um, I do have one gay uncle, which is amazing. We're the only two gay people in my family, so you'd think we'd be friends, but we're rivals. <laughs> um, he's a church queen. Uh, he's a church queen. He's like addicted to Cathal can't get enough of this stuff. Um, like the Pope is like his Britney. Uh, whereas I'm kind of more the kind of gay that like loves Queer Eye, you know? Thank you. I love Queer Eye's ethos of like, what matters is not how you look. What matters is how you feel. And how you feel is based on how you look. So we are gonna teach you about under eye stick. Um, I think I realized I was gay. I was pretty young. I was probably like nine or ten, I think. I think other people started to realize when I was at a sixth grade basketball game and my coach swore and I went, I literally can't do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Just left the game. <laughs> I feel like my parents always kind of knew too because like my dad would give my brothers advice. My dad would tell my brothers, find a gal that makes you feel like you don't deserve her. Which is beautiful, right? And then he would look at me and be like, don't do cocaine. <laughs> but also, like, me and my brothers, like, we grew up so different from each other. Like, both my brothers are taller than me. They're fitter than me. They carry themselves with confidence, you know? I'm small, pale. I carry myself like an inbred European prince. <laughs> I don't even really, like, step when I walk. I just sort of glide everywhere that I go. <laughs> I know I'm not ugly, though, I know that. Um, like, on a one to 10 scale, I don't think I could model, but I could definitely end a Republican senator's career, you know? <laughs> That's what I feel like I'm not. <laughs> Might just go to DC, take him down one dick at a time, you know? <laughs> no, I, I ended up coming out to my family not too long ago, and my parents, they both have very different reactions. Uh, my dad probably took it the hardest at first. My dad was like, oh my God, I can't believe my son is gay. I could have a stroke, I could have an heart attack. And I was like, you're being such a fucking queen right now. <laughs> it's kind of my moment and you are hogging the spotlight. So fall back. Um, my family is Jamaican by the way and homophobia is like our second best Olympic sport. <laughs> so, like, it's like bobsledding boom, you know, like they get to it. I think the funniest thing that my dad said though, he was like, my brothers are recording his reaction. <laughs> And he was like, you know, it's like, you ask your son to go mow the lawn and he just decides to be gay. <laughs> and like, I wanted to be mad, but that's exactly what happened, honestly. <laughs> he asked me one too many times, I was like, I'm gonna go suck a dick. <laughs> I fucking hate it here. <laughs> yeah. My mom was a polar opposite though. My mom found out and she texted me and she was like, I love my gay son. And then she started saying shit like, I don't know, maybe I'm gay. <laughs> I love my friends. <laughs> Me and Sandra have a great relationship. Maybe we can make something work. I don't know. <laughs> it was weird though, because I told my brothers, uh, I have two younger brothers, Javon and Javay, we couldn't afford other letters. And 
my younger brother Javon ended up coming out to me as bi not too long after, which was shocking because like another person taking my moment. Uh, <laughs> But also, my mom had a gay child, a bi child, and a straight child, so her womb was basically a gay dance club that became a Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> Do you guys observe pride? Uh, okay. All right, calm down. Um, I do, pride is obviously really, uh, really important. It's important to buy products. For all of June this year, I, I only bought clothing from companies that use LGBT-friendly sweatshops. And <laughs> I think, in general, I try to be an ethical consumer. Like the other day, I was at a party and someone offered me cocaine. And I said, I'm sorry, does this come from a woman-owned drug cartel? <laughs> it's just something a lot of people don't think about. Aside from being a proud member of the LGBTQ community, I'm also part of the most marginalized sexual minority in the world, which is people who are horny but prude. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> yeah. yeah, just kind of like, hey daddy, don't look at me, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's the energy I'm bringing. Um, <laughs> I actually, I just got out of a very long relationship. Um, it was over a year ago, but I haven't matured. And we were in a long distance relationship, emotional distance, we actually lived together, but. <laughs> but, but when you go through a breakup, like, you just, you have all these intrusive thoughts that you can't control. Your brain is just doing its own thing. Has anyone here ever experienced intimacy? And I, <laughs> so I would just wake up every day and have all these unwanted thoughts, just like, I have to get a wrist tattoo. <laughs> that says, breathe. I'm not gonna lie, we were lesbians, we did it. We did the lesbian thing. We lesbian did this fuck up, you know? We got married super fast. We met in February, we got married in June. <laughs> Lesbian style, don't judge me. I live my life how I want. <laughs> it was fast. But I also feel like that's a part of why it's going bad. <laughs> Just not enough time, you know what I mean? We moved too quick. That's how your stuff gets messed up. And my grandmother tried to warn me. She's like, you're moving too fast. And then it was like, yo, we really are, because my wife's already talking about kids. So they're talking about babies, you know what I mean? And I'm super excited, but just not now, but I'm ready, I want one, you know? When it's time, I'm gonna go buy an Asian baby. <laughs> I'm gonna get a straight up Asian baby, turn it up. <laughs> go cop one of them things fresh off the lot, you know? <laughs> I'm ready. I was so eh, I went and told my grandmother about it. I was like, yo, listen, we gonna adopt an Asian baby. She started shitting on me. Tried to ruin my dream, she was like, eh. An Asian baby, you need to adopt a black baby. I was like, I got a black baby for free. <laughs> for free. If I'm gonna buy a baby, I'm gonna get the best baby I can get. I'm gonna buy the best baby on the market. I'm not invest my money, you sound stupid. <laughs> it's hard though, it's hard merging lives, you know? We got other factors, you know what I mean? With ladies, our periods have synced up. It's crazy. No one's discussing that. The lesbian community is not, you know, message boarding about this shit. We should be, it's a problem. The period sync up is huge. It's a huge issue, man. It's hard. We're fighting, I don't even know why. We're just two broads for one week out of every month going at it. I don't even understand why. Just emotions out of fucking control. She's in the bedroom crying over Love Actually. I'm in the living room crying over ESPN 30 for 30 documentaries. <laughs> Losing my mind. I'm over 30, so my emotions are out of whack. I'm rocking my dog like he's a baby crying. I don't know what I'm doing. We meet in the hallway, yell over Hugh, use the last tampon, cry over our daddy issues. It's bad. It's the one time where I'm like, eh, maybe this is against God. Maybe this is how nature intended the shit. Maybe we're wrong. 
like, it is so spooky when Netflix figures out that you're gay. <laughs> because you never tell them that. Like, it's not like Facebook where you sign up and you're like, hello, I'm Gabriel. I'm from Philadelphia and I like to suck out or whatever. <laughs> And then from then on, like, the right-hand third of your screen is just always like, tank tops, tank tops for sale, tank top vacation, one dollar just for you, Gabriel. Like, you don't tell Netflix anything about yourself, just like your email address and your billing zip code, and they figure out that you're gay over time using some, like, judgment algorithm or whatever <laughs> behind the screen that's just like, totally like paying attention to what you run they're like oh you watch that huh yeah um i'm femme i see a lot of you people looking there's a lot of guys that are like gay look like that now yes we look like this <laughs> not all of us are ellen okay <laughs> if you don't know what femme is femme means i dress like i look like i want men to talk to me but i don't <laughs> unless you're industry right Whoever books Riverdale, come talk to me. I want to be on that show. I will talk to you, Trevor, all right? <laughs> yeah, uh, a lot of people ask, um, who's the man in the relationship? Because I usually date women that are also femme. And I just think it's like a ridiculous question. You know, like we're in a different time now. Gender does not matter. It doesn't matter what gender you are. We are all fucking miserable in relationships. <laughs> we all are just one argument away from dating a tree. I think that's pansexual. I have no idea. I have no idea. I think Janelle Monet is that. Um, I'm going to die tweeting at Bette Midler. You know, <laughs> when are you going to do Hocus Pocus 2, Dad? <laughs> And they'll be like, Miss Midler, you have to do this movie. It was the dying wish of a twink. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, a twink is like a young gay who you want to fill with cream. <laughs> you shouldn't have given us rights. That's basically, you shouldn't have given us rights because now we run culture. All right, that was your first mistake. Your second mistake was inventing YouTube because now every 11-year-old is a full drag queen. Like, <laughs> have you talked to an 11-year-old recently? I have a lot of younger followers on Instagram. Don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll post like just a single photo of myself and every comment will be like, slay queen. And then you click the profile and it is a literal child. <laughs> and it's just like, I'm Grayson, I'm from Champaign, Illinois. I'm that bitch of Miss Schaefer's class. Oh, come. And you're like, Grayson, you obviously have never met Mike Pence. I've got a good friend, Steve, and we got in this debate the other day. You gotta bear with me on this one. This was the debate. So, I'm a masculine energy person, Steve is a straight guy, and he's also masculine energy. And when two masculine energy people play the game, would you rather, it gets pretty dirty pretty quick, you know? It's never like, would you rather have pumpkin pie or apple pie? It's like, would you rather fuck a dog or a pigeon? Like, ah. <laughs> about attraction and gender and energy and masculine energy and feminine energy and I was like Steve <laughs> would you rather be with an effeminate little guy like a really feminine little like fuck me daddy I'm a whore like ah I need my brains banged out or I can't think straight like twinkie little like mm, 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 mm. little guy just skip it around would you rather that or would you rather like some woman that's so butch, she looks like she builds the closets other gay people have to come out of. <laughs> Just stomping in the, boom, what's for dinner spaghetti? I love spaghetti! <laughs> would you rather that, which one? Cause I was like, I take the little guy hands down 100%. It's the feminine energy. I, okay, I can make that work. And he said he'd rather be with the butch woman. So what I realized, I was like, well, Steve, that's fucking gay. <laughs> 
The pandemic was so long, I transitioned. <laughs> That's right. All those gas station attendants my entire life calling me sir were right. They were right. <laughs> they were right. They knew me and they loved me before I could love myself. You know? <laughs> I'm very grateful to those guys. <laughs> very grateful. I've been taking testosterone for about a year. And uh, yeah, thank you. Um, and honestly, sometimes I just feel like history's slowest werewolf, you know, just like, <laughs> just a hair every now and then, you know? <laughs> Not so much like howling at the moon, but I can carry like four bags of groceries on one arm. <laughs> I do use they, them pronouns, thank you so much. I... <laughs> Usually people, you know, lift me up on their shoulders and carry me out into the streets. As, so, I mean, kind of timid for me, but whatever. I will be canceling you all later. That's fine. None of you have jobs or social media, so... Next time, clap! Just kidding. I do. I mostly use they, them pronouns these days just to keep people questioning whether they really want to talk to me or not. It's like a very great buffer. People are like, I don't know, what can I, I'm avoiding you. I'm just, I'm not gonna talk to you. I can't, I don't know what to say. <laughs> but then if you live in like, you know, a progressive place, you know, I go to parties or something and some faux woke person always like accosts me. And I'm so sorry, it's always the white ladies. They're always, <laughs> it's like, it takes one to know one. You know what I mean? I'm just like, I used to, I used to be you, you know, I used to. <laughs> I thought I was, I thought, I thought I was, you know, I thought, and I was wrong, but. Cause like the dudes pretty much leave me alone, you know, it's, it's either out of confusion or respect. And I think it's a great combo of both. <laughs> But I go to parties and like the, the women are just like, I gotta know what pronouns you use. What are your pronouns? And like they don't even know my name yet, but they're like, what pronouns? I gotta know. I gotta know. I gotta know. <laughs> and I'm like, they them, and they're like, she uses they them, everybody. <laughs> I'm just like, if you don't care, don't ask. You know what I mean? If you don't care what my pronouns are, don't ask. That's my update to don't ask, don't tell. If you don't care, <laughs> don't ask. <laughs> Leave me alone. I am gay, um, and thank you. <laughs> um, uh, was anybody on OK Cupid like back in the day? <laughs> Same. Um, <laughs> I, I had a weird, like when I first moved to New York City, I was on OkCupid like quite a bit and I had like a lot of anxiety about like online dating and um, I had a weird OkCupid strategy which is that I would create a profile and then just like immediately kind of like be in my head about that and then I would not like log in for like four months. <laughs> And then eventually when I would try to log back in, I would forget my password. Um, and I also forgot the password to the burner email account that I used to create the profile. So I would just end up making it an entirely different profile. And there was a point in my life where I did have five active profiles on OkCupid, and each one was much more vulnerable than the last one. Like when you make a profile, you're supposed to answer like fun, flirty questions about yourself. One of them is like, what's a typical Friday night for you? And the first profile I made for that question, I answered dancing. <laughs> you know, I'm fun, whatever. Um, by the time I got to the fifth profile for that same question, I answered honestly thinking about my family's history of mental illness <laughs> and alcoholism. <laughs> Dot, 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 like dancing though. <laughs> 
Um, I ended up just getting an 87% match with one of my other profiles. <laughs> so I'm dating myself, which is chill. Um, I did like graduate to Grinder. I'm on Grinder now. Uh, <laughs> thank you. It's like, am I gonna die from a Grinder hookup? TBD, you know? <laughs> Grinder is dark, but like one of the one of something I like about Grinder are the profile names. Um, because like I feel like I've encountered uh, like Grinder profile names that like have like two parts to them. Like the first part of the name is like something very personal about the guy, and then the second part is something exclusively about his dick. <laughs> Like actual grinder profile names I've seen are like recently sober, uncut. <laughs> I've also seen like NYC transplant, seven inches. <laughs> My grinder profile name is Native American, sponsored by Casper Mattress. <laughs> I'm no longer like terrified of dying during a grinder hookup though, like, cause that's kind of like he died doing what he loved. Uh, I'm gay, uh, sexually, I'm pretty cool otherwise. <laughs> okay. I'm dating a conservative gay guy, and uh, all my liberal friends are really mad at me. They're like, oh no, Dylan, you shouldn't. Then you fuck me, if that's what you want. Otherwise, I'm going with Honky Montana, okay? Because he fucks me, and culturally, too. He gets it, <laughs> you know? These socialists aren't paying for pizza. <laughs> They're not, you know? But it's weird. Like, dating a gay conservative is like bringing a deaf person to a concert. It's just like, are, are you having fun? I just feel like we're having different experiences right now. But I'm glad that you're here. Just confused as to why. <laughs> and we'll get into arguments sometimes because like I'm more liberal and he's more conservative. I'm like, hey, you really can't say this stuff online. It like hurts people's feelings, like legitimately. But then I'll hear a bump in the night. And I'll be like, oh my God, I hope he has a gun. I hope he has a gun. It could be immigrants. We don't know. <laughs> the situation. We don't know what the Swedish are doing. <laughs> uh, I am dating women now. I, I... <laughs> Okay. Is it a woo? Is it a woo? <laughs> Bitch, I'm in my 30s. It just seems prudent. <laughs> you know, but here we are. I'm dating women. And the first time I hooked up with a woman, um, I had these nails and... <laughs> It was just a real long-time listener, first-time caller energy. <laughs> you know, but where there is a will, there is a way. I got just real Edward scissor hands up in it. <laughs> Didn't do a full cut, just a graze. <laughs> and I made her come. <laughs> To me, queerness is the I'm hungry, but I don't know for what of sexualities. My sexuality is just a salad from McDonald's. It's confusing the some, appealing to others. Either way, I'm loving it. You know what, maybe I'm bi. Maybe I'm bi because I am attracted to very feminine men, but I'm also attracted to very masculine men. I recently told... I recently told a guy at coffee that information. I said, I identify as bi or queer because that's more honest and reflective of my sexual and romantic journey. But if you were to call me gay, wouldn't get mad. Gay is not a bad word. In fact, sometimes gay is just easier shorthand for straight people to wrap their brains around. When they don't want to have to use the terms, we come out with every three months to categorize, quantify, and qualify sexuality. And he said, that is a lot. <laughs> to write on one cup. <laughs> And I said, you right, my bad, homie. My name is Jay, and you guys, he still got my name wrong. He just wrote gay on the cup. <laughs> Put that there. I hear from those varying pitches that there are some straight people out there. That's nice. Listen, I like straight people. I do a lot of straight outreach, usually at urinals. Uh, 
just handing out pamphlets, don't get crazy. Okay, here's a little bit of honesty. I used to be straight, then I got better. Yeah, there's a vaccine for it. Did you know? That's right, vaccines don't cause autism. Vaccines make your kids gay. And by that, I mean they let your child live long enough to figure it out. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, because last week I did that joke for what I can only describe as a very pro-polio crowd, so. <laughs> Between you and me, I'm just happy that joke still has legs. <laughs> no, you guys, I'm serious. I did used to be straight. I used to date girls because we've all made mistakes. And, um, <laughs> I like to think of the female body the same way I think of the South, in the sense that I'm from there and I visited. But I don't know if that's where I want to raise my kids. <laughs> also, it's not the heat, it's the humidity. Does that? Ah, <laughs> oh, come on, you guys, that is a perfectly pH balanced joke. <laughs> that joke is a seven. Uh, <laughs> I could go back, ladies. I could go back. I could go back. That is a threat. Yeah, it could definitely happen. I could go back to dating girls, but me going back to girls, that's like LeBron James going to the Lakers in the sense that it would cost a lot of money. I'd probably have to bring some of my boys with me. And at the end of the day, you ain't getting no ring. Um, I thought that this would be a great time in history to bring another human into this world. I had a baby with a woman the way that my Lord and Savior, Melissa Etheridge, intended. Yeah. Oh, I came to her window with a lot of frozen sperm. It's like, drink up, sweetheart. I'm making a baby. We obviously, we needed sperm, we needed help, but like, that's not for lack of trying. My wife and I tried so hard to do it on our own. We did, we just scissored night in and night out, just like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we just scissor, scissor, scissor. And unfortunately, we did not make another human, but we did make a very beautiful, intricate snowflake chain that we hang up around the holidays. <laughs> They are for sale after the show as well. <laughs> they smell like fish. <laughs> this is disgusting. Um, I have, right now, I'm, I'm in a great relationship. I have a wonderful boyfriend. Um, before that, I was single, because that's how that works. Uh, and that was awful, because dating is stupid as hell. It's dumb as hell all across the board, especially now with modern dating. We have the apps. Like, I try Tinder, because I've always wanted to date the ugliest person in a group photo. We know which one you are, <laughs> okay? But I also was on Grindr. And if you're not familiar with Grindr, uh, it is a very real-time, very uh, intense gay sex app. And it was a little too intense for me. Like, I remember the messages that I get. One of them, uh, this guy sent me this message, all caps. I only fuck masculine dudes. Are you masculine? I responded, all lowercase, yes. <laughs> I'm so masculine that I am done being gay. I fuck mountains now, dog. What do you need? <laughs> it was also weirdly racist. This one white guy, he sent me this message, looking for a man with a big chocolate dick. That was the first thing he said to me. Not hi, hello, other human person in the world. Just write to looking for a man with a big chocolate dick. I immediately replied with, oh my God, me too. <laughs> he killed my father. <laughs> we need to team up. <laughs> Hunt down the man with a big chocolate dick. I'll scour the internet, you search the streets. <laughs> we'll bring him to justice together. <laughs> By the way, justice is the name of my mouth. Um, <laughs> what? Come on, I thought we were having fun here. <laughs> I 
as a uh, professional homosexual, I've been trying to figure out what is the gayest thing in the entire world. I've done my field research and I've come to the conclusion that straight men that refuse to eat pussy are the gayest thing in the entire world. Why do you exist? Who are you for? Why can they never keep it a secret? They always brag about it. They just show up to parties and go, I don't eat pussy. And then they leave. <laughs> and you're standing there like, why did I need to know that? Because you have to understand, I have sucked hundreds, nay, thousands of dicks. And not once have I bragged about not eating pussy. Never had such a gay ass thought in my life. I was given a gay blowjob recently. Look, thank you. And also to you, I... <laughs> they're not all gay, you know? This guy knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> they're not all gay, but the way I do it is pinky out. You know what I'm talking about? I get... I bat my eyelashes like a cartoon character, whatever it takes. But I've been down there for a while. I was down there for about 30 minutes. Yeah, goddamn. That's an entire episode of Seinfeld. And I know because we watched an entire episode of Seinfeld. I'm a guy's guy, you know, I'm a guy's guy. I'm not afraid. I do it for the fellas, you know? I was down there for about 30 minutes and finally I was like, hey, are you close? And he said, I'm on Lexapro. I forgot to tell you I might not come. I said, when were you gonna tell me? I'm about 45 seconds from developing lockjaw. <laughs> and you're on the coward's drug Lexapro? <laughs> Life is hard, get, grow up. <laughs> no, no, no. Being medicated is good, seriously, stay on your meds. Um, you stay on your meds. I. I was furious. I was like, you can't, this is, I'm sucking dick for the love of the game. What's going on? I'm an American citizen. I have rights, you know, like. <laughs> Speaking of collecting STDs, I'm dating. Dating's hard. Dating gay dudes is hard. Am I right, ladies? Um, <laughs> You know, I, I feel like I reached like peak millennial dating moment. I was on a date a few nights ago. The guy disclosed in the middle of it. He asked me out because his birth chart told him to. Ooh. I was like, what does the chart say about eating my ass? What house is my booty in, Starboy? Uh, No, I did come across my favorite Tinder profile ever. Um, how do we feel about the wallet phone case? <laughs> Fun fact, when you turn 30, they just send you one. Um, okay, so first of all, his name is Yale, uh, which I think we can all agree is the key word in an article about sexual assault. like the Yale rapist or Yale the rapist both work uh, but here's his profile uh, in this age of hipster twerps and soy boys present it's time we revisit the glory days and then it's just bullet points about him owns a construction company physically confident can scale a mountain is everyone else sopping wet and this next one, you guys, if I have to kill, I do it neatly. I've just been asking audiences, what does that mean? 
like, are there any damaged men in the room who would like this? Or is it just like 50-50, you're going to die on this date? Oh. After that, it's healthy and active with a modicum of decorum. And at the very bottom, it just says, in Southern California with a kid for a make-a-wish type thing. Is this what we're killing neatly? So I swiped right. Uh, hopefully I'll match with old Yale. Because unfortunately, Yale is my type. Uh, I'm painfully attracted to toxic masculinity. Do we know what that is? Yes. For those of you who don't, toxic masculinity is when a man becomes so masculine, he becomes poisonous to himself and those around him. And it makes me come so hard. Because, okay, like, you guys know me now. I'm catastrophically gay. Uh, which is super cute in like LA and, and New York. Not so cute in other parts of the world. And or look at it this way, I'm not built for battle. You know, like, I'm just as frail as I look. Like these wrists are good for three things. Holding a microphone, mixing pancake batter, and jerking off dudes who don't read good. So good news on the personal front, I've been dating my girlfriend now for two years, which is super cool. Yes, it's awesome. Which of course means I'm gay. Take a second, and we're back, and we're back. And we're back. Apparently for a long uh, chunk of time, I had no idea I was gay, but everyone else knew. <laughs> Which was awkward, and uh, they were like, Aaron, we were waiting for you to be comfortable, talk about it, come out in your own time, you know, which was super cool, but I felt like if someone had given me a little push in that direction, it would have saved me 10 years of horrible dates with men and low self-esteem, but whatever. <laughs> you go at your own pace. I knew, uh, you know, my mom's super cool about everything now, but I knew like coming out to her would be a little rocky because she's a Catholic school teacher, you know? A bit conservative. Because uh, I knew she had this like crazy stereotype in her mind of what my girlfriend was gonna look like, right? Like her worst fear in life is like we'd come home for a holiday and we'd roll into the driveway in this Ford monster truck. <laughs> And my girlfriend get out, you know, she'd climb out of the truck and be like, hey, Mrs. Foley, my name's Jackie. I'm shagging your daughter. <laughs> oh, wow. You got, a, you got a great house here. It looks real nice. Whoa, hold up. I know some shingles are loose on the roof. <laughs> Let me go to my truck and get my caulking gun and tool belt and fix that up for you. <laughs> hey, princess, because that's what she calls me. <laughs> Hey, Princess, you want me to get me like a pulled pork sandwich and a beer? That'd be great. And then my mom passes out. I wanted to come out to my Muslim family for a really long time, uh, but my dad was always like, shh, keep it a secret, man. Secrets are cool. I was like, Dad, I'm married now. What's your five year plan with this secret? I just keep on showing up to family things with like, my white best friend. <laughs> She loves Ramadan. <laughs> Pretty soon we've got like a little kid best friend. <laughs> no, what? We <laughs> found him in a well. So obviously, as uh, Christian as my parents are, they did not take it super well when I came out of the closet. Mostly because I did not come out of the closet. They read my journal when I was 17. Um, yes, gasp is right. Um, it was rough because at that point in my life, my journal was less of like an introspective thoughts and dreams journal and more of just a BuzzFeed list of guys' dicks I was sucking, you know? Like, uh, <laughs> no content to sift through, just straight to the headlines. It was clickbait for my parents. Uh, they couldn't resist, they had to see it. Um, it was tough for them. But what's even funnier, so I, I mentioned I was adopted. I have two adopted siblings. They're biological to my mom and dad. And I have an older brother, and a couple of years ago, he also came out of the closet, which is like, well, you know, like, <laughs> I couldn't have planned a better prank, you know, like that. Oh, 
Oh, you pumped him good, Jesus. Uh, I can't. Oh, it's so funny. It's so delicious to me because my parents, they really, like, they truly rolled the dice there, you know? Like, they made one themselves, they got one off the rack, and they both turned out gay, you know? Like, I don't know what the scientific argument is there, but that feels like nurture, bitch, okay? <laughs> that feels like your fault. 